सो हेलो गाइस हियर वी हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर 17 फ्रॉम चेक योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर रे एंड वेव ऑप्टिक्स फ्रॉम पाथ फाइंड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट टू इनकोवेरेंट लाइट सोर्सेज एस वन एंड एस टू ईच एमिटिंग मोनोक्रोमेटिक लाइट ऑफ वेव लेंथ लैमडा अब प्लेस सिमेट्रिकली इन फ्रंट ऑफ एन ओपेक स्क्रीन ए कंटेनिंग टू सिमेट्रिकली पोजिशन स्लिट्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ स्क्रीन ए अनदर वाइट स्क्रीन बी इज प्लेस एज शोन स्केमेटिकली इन द फिगर distance between the source and sources is l and that between the slits is d the distance between sources and the screen a as well as that between the screens a and b is capital d the distance d capital d is much larger than the distance is a small l and small d for what values of the distance l between the sources no stationary interference pattern will be observed on screen b so wh- whoever wants to try this on your own yeah you should try it now so if you want a hint here is it think where is there no interference even if there had been a single source instead of two sources so if you don't want to try it with the hint uh, please do it now so now let's uh, see it, look at the solution so first of all in the solution what we need, uh, need to be very clear is uh, with the definition of coherent and incoherent sources well, first of all what do we mean by coherent sources or two coherent sources are those in which the phase difference between the lights emitted between the two is constant with time so basically uh, in physics what we assume is that whenever there are two different origins for a light they can never be coherent this is a general assumption we uh, use in most of our problems unless uh, uh, unless otherwise stated uh, and that happens in the case of lasers and stuff but uh, we don't need it here and also what we need to uh, know that is that incoherent sources can never produce uh, stationary interference patterns stationary interference patterns is produced only by two coherent sources so basically here uh, stationary interference patterns will be produced by s1 individually and s2 individually but there will be no interference in s1 and s2 which will be stationary there will be interference but it won't be stationary so it uh, won't ma- uh, matter to us in this question So for this solution I will need one uh, lemma or a, a very general result which is which might be very commonly known to you so I'll just prove it here so the lemma is in case of st- interference due to s- a single source if we displace the source by some angle with respect to the center of slits the central maxima of the interference pattern will shift by the same angle in the opposite direction so to prove this let's assume we have a s- source s and the slit dis- uh, distance between the slits is d and uh, let's say we have the central maxima here so th- uh, by the definition of central maxima the dis- path difference uh, the difference between the path length there should be zero so if we look at path differences here the lower ray will uh, uh, travel a distance of delta x1 more uh, in this part and the upper ray will cover a distance of delta x2 in this part and let's say that the angle of the s- uh, line joining source and the center of the slits with the central axis is theta 1 and that of central maxima and uh, this point joining with the central axis is theta 2 so from here what we get is this uh, delta x1 equals to d sin theta 1 and delta x2 is d sin theta 2 the proof to this is very trivial and you can do it on your on yourself so for central maxima we uh, we know that delta x1 should be equals to delta x2 so from here we clearly see that de- theta 1 equals to theta 2 so what we get from here is that if we displace the source by some uh, angle theta 1 here then uh, the central maxima will obviously shift in the opposite direction by the same angle so we can use this result now here now so as to have points where we observe no stationary interference the minima of the stationary interference due to s1 and s2 must coincide otherwise at every point we will observe a stationary interference due to either s1 or s2 so so what this means to say is that let's say uh, the interference pattern of s1 due to s1 is something like this and the interference pattern due to s2 is something like this so if their minima don't coincide at every point there will be some stationary interference either due to s1 or s2 and it won't have zero value so what we get from here is that the stationary interference due to s1 and s2 should uh, the minima due to both of these should coincide so the re- uh, what we can get from here is that the distance between the t- two central maximas l should be equals to n plus half times 
the fringe width the fringe width is the distance between two maximas due to uh, uh, in an interference pattern and it is generally given by lambda d over d where d is the distance between the slits and the screen and uh, small d is the distance between the slits so from here we can clearly see that the value of l should be n plus half times lambda d over d where n is some integer so yeah that's the final answer thank you